Hi and welcome to Demystifying Math. This is part three in a video series on surface of revolution. In this part we're going to be concentrating on curves that have been revolved about the y-axis. Let's start with a specific example. We have the function f of x equals x to the one-third. We also have a formula here. In part one of this series we developed a formula for a surface area for a graph that's been revolved about the x-axis. The only difference between that formula and this one is the x here. Instead of f of x, we just have x. That's because the radius is now horizontal. So instead of a y value, we have x value there. We could also rewrite this formula. Instead of using x, we could use the function in terms of y, or y to the third in this case. And then, of course, we have to make the adjustment here, turning everything into y values. Now, I'm saying we're turning everything into y values. We're also going to be turning our endpoints of integration into y values. So in the first one, we have from a to b. That would be x values, so in this case, from 0 to 8. Notice that we have dx here. We have to have x values on our endpoints of integration. On our second value uh, formula, we have dy. C and D must be y values. So instead of using from 0 to 8, we would use from 0 to 2 if we chose to use this formula. Sometimes it's easier to integrate in terms of x <coughs> than it is to integrate in terms of y or vice versa. So you may have to do some trial and error to decide which one is best to use. For this particular problem, we're going to do both so you can see that they come out to exactly the same value but sometimes it's a little bit more work to do it one way than the other. Okay, so let's go ahead and find our surface area by using the formula in terms of x. So our function is x to the one-third, and we're going to take the first derivative of it first. So we get one-third x to the negative two-thirds. Then we're going to go ahead and square that, and we get one-ninth x to the negative four-thirds. Now we can plug in to our formula replacing the f prime at x squared with 1 over 9x to the 4 thirds. Now in order to integrate this, we're going to find a common denominator first, which is just the 9x to the 4 thirds. And then I'm going to bring the two fractions together. So we get 9x to the 4 thirds plus 1 over 9x to the 4 thirds under the radical. I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of the denominator, which gives us 3x to the 2 thirds. Now I put it under the x because I want to be able to simplify that fraction. So let's go ahead and do that. So we end up with x to the 1 third over 3. Let's pull the 3 out from um, inside the integration to outside the integration. It makes it a little bit simpler. And again, we're integrating from 0 to 8. Our endpoints of integration must be the x values. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of u substitution to help us solve or evaluate the integral. We're going to let u equal what's underneath the radical, which is 9x to the 4 thirds plus 1. Then we're going to take the derivative of that to find du. So we have 9 times the 4 thirds x. Reducing our exponent by 1, we get 1 third. Simplifying our fraction, we get uh, 12 x to the 1 third dx. Or we could say that we have 1 12th du equals x to the 1 third dx. We have an x to the 1 third dx in our formula for the surface area, so we can replace that with the 1 12th du. We also need to find our new endpoints of integration. So plugging a 0 into our u formula of 9x to the 4 thirds plus 1, we get 1. And plugging in our upper bound on our integration of 8, we ended up with 145. So let's go ahead and do all of our substitution. So we replace the x to the 1 third with 1 12th to u. And we replace the 9x to the 4 thirds plus 1 with u. Our endpoints of integration are from 1 to 45, 1 to 145. Simplifying our fraction, we get 1 18th pi, and we have the square root of u du. So now all we have to do is take the integral of the square root of u, 
which gives us 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. And then plug in our endpoints of integration. So we have pi over 27, I simplified the 1 18th times 2 thirds, and u to the 3 halves. So let's go ahead and plug in our 145, and then 1 to any power is simply 1. So this is our surface area, and we can get an estimate on our calculator of that. About 203 is our surface area, and that would be in units squared. Okay, so we found our surface area in terms of x. Let's go ahead and use the same equation and find the surface area using the other formula, which is in terms of y. So we want to have f at y in this case, so we're going to use the y to the third. Then we're going to take the derivative of that and square it. Now we can plug in 9y to the fourth into our formula. And where we have f of y, we're going to put y to the third. Our endpoints of integration have to be our y values, so it's going all the way from 0 to 2. Now we have to use u substitution to solve this. So we have 1 plus 9y to the fourth is u, and then we're going to take the derivative of that, which gives us 36y to the third. Or we could say that 1 over 36 du is equal to y to the third. Now we're going to find our endpoints of integration. Plugging into the u formula, our 0 becomes 1 in terms of u, and our 2 becomes 145 in terms of u. So let's go ahead and do all our substitution. So we have 2 pi times the integral from 1 to 145 of 136 times the square root of u du. u. Or pi over 18 times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. This should start looking familiar to you. Notice that our endpoints or integration are exactly the same as what we had before. And we are integrating the square root of u just as we did before. So we end up with pi over 27 u to the 3 halves from 1 to 145. Exactly what we had on the previous example when we did it in terms of x. So we ended up with exactly the same answer. So you can use either one of these formulas. Notice that this was a little bit easier for us to integrate than the last one, but we still got the same answer. All right, let's go on and try another example. In this case, we have our function given in terms of y, which is the cosine of y. You should recognize this as the arc sine, arc cosine rather. Um, but we're going to leave it as cosine y just to make it a little bit easier for us to do the integration. So we have our f at y, and we need to find f prime at y and square it. So f prime at y squared is sine squared. Let's go ahead and substitute into our surface area formula. So we have cosine of y times the square root of 1 plus sine squared y dy. We're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 2. So we're going to do a little bit of u substitution. We're going to let u equal the sine of y. So du equals cosine y dy. All right, so substituting in um, 0 into our u formula to find our new endpoints of integration. We got 0. And for pi over 2, we get 1. So our formula becomes 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 plus u squared du. Now, for this particular problem, we're going to have to use some integration tables. We could do trigonomic substitution, or you can use a calculator or any other tool that's going to evaluate this integral for you. Alright, so using the, tri um, the integration tables, we have 1 half times u times the square root of 1 plus u squared plus the natural log of u plus the square root of 1 plus u squared. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1 and multiply by 2 pi. So we can clear out the 1 half and the pi and plug in a 1, which just gives us the square root of 2 plus the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 2. Plugging in the 0, we get 0 plus the natural log of 1, which is just 0. So we have 
pi times the square root of 2 plus the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 2 gives us the surface area of this figure that's been revolved about the y-axis, or about 7.2 units squared. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math. I hope this helped you a little bit with surface of revolutions.